Hello everybody, it's Dr. Zeno with 15 Minute Fuel, where just in 15 minutes a day will fuel your mind, your body, and your future. Let me grab my stuff over here. We're taking pictures. Okay. So today we're going to be going over, uh, before that, of course, we do the announcements when I'm waiting for everybody to get on. If you're listening on SoundCloud, Stitcher, or iTunes, please leave a review, uh, and also send us your messages. You can, you can respond. What do you want to hear? We'll be able to help you do everything with that. Just let me know. Also, thank you so much for joining our Instagram. We have a lot of good stuff going on there, and Snapchat, a lot of funny things. What's up, Gabe? Hey, babe. My wife's on, and Gabe. Gabe and babe. And uh, thank you for just joining. Like, Get really engaged with those. They're really a lot of fun, and you get to see other things that you're not getting here at 15 Minute Fuel. Plus, YouTube is a great way to see the entire list of all the 100 plus 15 minute fuels we've done, and you'll see a playlist of all the We Are Heroes shows. I think, believe uh, episode 38 came out yesterday. Uh, it was when I got almost got kicked out of Whole Foods. So that's a traveling day. That's when I'm a little grumpy. But uh, don't worry. Wait till you see the next one. We'll be at Dr. Josh, Josh Axe's office. All right. So let's get uh, let's continue. We're going to start part four today on time expansion hacks, okay? So the thing is, we can't make more time, but we could do things to make the use of every second of our time. And just, you know, we went over, we, I'll just tell you where we went to. We went to yesterday, we are talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting rid of your TV, getting rid of zero or negative income producing activities, things that are life drainers to you. Low income producing activities, we told you, delegate those out, schools out, hire a high school kid to uh, do that. They'll appreciate that. Pay them in cash to do. They love cash. Um, then uh, high income producing activities. That's the things that you do in your life that bring the most income to help then what? Fuel your lifetime legacy activities. That's the time with your family. That's the experiences and memories that life is really made up of. Remember, we want to get as many great experiences back to back in as short of time as possible. That's living an enriched life. So that could be developing skills, going whatever you want to do, traveling, you know, enjoying your life, enjoying your family, that is lifetime legacy. You're doing things that, that uh, provide equity and value to people's lives. So today, we're going to talk about, uh, I already said, well, I kind of, well, we go into it. So I said delegate activities of low on, on the virtual, got it. But aim to spend, watch this, aim to spend 30% of your time preparing and training for 100% of what you do for a living. So let me talk to everybody again. So if I work six hours a day, my goal is actually to spend three of that uh, equal, like if I work six hours a day, my goal is actually to spend six hours a day training myself or taking or prepare myself for those other six hours. I'll say that again, right? Because I have only five fingers. Let's do this. So if I work five hours a day, I, I try to get five hours in and taking care of myself from preparing for those five hours. So each hour you work, you should spend an hour preparing, recharging, focusing. So that could be, what's those five hours off? It could be working out, taking care of my body, reading, sharpening my focus, doing things to personally development, right? So I do those things, you know, cooking my meals, eating my meals, right? So those five hours, I want to make sure I'm recharging, refueling myself to work focused hard and give my best for those five hours that I'm working. And a great way to do it. So that's why we need to get rid of zero, zero income and negative income producing activities. So when you get rid of that junk, then you're opening up that time for now. You could use that time to prepare. That could be a nap. That could be a 20, 30 minute nap if you need it. That could be preparing your meals. That could be for the week. That could be you know, getting your exercise in. That could be your reading time, whatever that is. So you, you swap out, you get rid of the zero income or negative activity rules, put it, use that time to now develop your skills. Because when you delegate this stuff out, you'll have extra time. But that extra time, you don't want to be idle. You want to be able to use it productively to now enhance your skills, your superpowers, train on them, personally develop yourself, and take care of your body. That's, that's, that's three awesome ways to use that now extra time that you have that you wish that you had before, but now you have it. So I tell people, try to spend 30% of the time preparing for 100% of the time that you're actually working or doing your skill. But just in the back of my head, I always try, listen, if I work six hours, I want to get six hours of, of uh, personal training and detoxification, working out and preparing my meals, you know, getting focused. If I need to take a nap, I take a nap. So I want to prepare almost the equal amount of time that I actually serve and work and do the things because that's how you stay creative. Because you need that time to become creative. A lot of these ideas that I'm talking about, they're all during creativity time, right? Because if I was busy and running around and putting out fires, that and remember, if I was running around with negative or low-income producing activities, I would feel really busy, 
And I could even say, listen, I'm hustling, I'm hustling. And I could pride, pride myself as a hustler, but in reality, I'm not very effective or very efficient. So here it's the illusion that I was actually uh, being productive, productive, but I'm not. But to be able to delegate out, free up these times, have other people doing these things because you know, you're pro providing value to them by giving them a job or getting rid of low, low income, zero income producing activities. I freed up time to where that freed up time could be that peace time where I, I really could sit, write, I could write these things, I could have the time where I could, I could use, become creative. And that's a real good sign that you're, you're, Christ, you're becoming crisis driven is when you feel you lost your creativity. Okay, so again, I'll say this. When you feel you're not getting great ideas or you lost your creativity or you lose, you're just not creative anymore, it's because you're being, you're being ran by everybody else and everybody else's values. So if you start adding that time in by get, well, exchanging time, right, and expanding time, you'll be able to get that time where you get creative, creativeness again, creative thoughts, creative ideas. I always, and, just, I'm, and I know I'm in a good time because as long as I have those creative ideas coming, like the 15 minute fuels, it challenges me to come up with a topic every single day. I could have done a podcast, which I will soon probably, where the podcast I interview somebody. So Matt, if I interviewed all of you, I wouldn't have to come up with material. The, the conversation would be it. But now it's the pressure of, of coming up with content material. So it actually allows me, I know it forces myself to do things to stay creative. I need to stay creative. And that's my morning ritual as well. And my morning ritual just means it's time for myself in the morning. Exercise, like I was working out today, got some great ideas. I got some great ideas this morning, connect with people. As long as, when you feel those ideas coming, you're in, you're in a good place. That means that you have the right, the right amount of time for yourself. But when you feel that creativity go away, then you know you got, you got to let go of some things and start delegating some things out. Uh, then a reminder list or memory management is small wins. Memory management is horrible. So let's say, this is the thing, so let's say you're getting these good ideas. Don't try to remember them here. Write them down. Or like on your phone, I have the reminder list, right? The reminders. And I type them in there. As soon as I get an idea, I type it down. I write it down. So I take it from here and I put it on paper or I put it on the phone. This way I don't have to try to, I don't have to tuck it here to try to remember it because you're going to lose it. And then here you, you're, you're cultivating this creative time in your life. You're getting great downloads and great ideas and maybe seeing things differently to tweak things in your life and then you forget them. So that's why I write everything down or I put them on the reminders list and then that's like my to-do list or, or you know in that week when I say plan your day before you can uh, no, finish your day before you start or finish your week before you start. So then in that reminder list when I look over the week I know hey this is, this is the person I get in contact to talk about this. This is what I have to do to achieve this or do this. So I get to plan my week and I put that in the week, like almost appointment time. So make sure you have a reminder list and you want to have memory. Memory management is one of the most stressful things you could do. So write it down. Once it's written down, you don't have to spend any energy trying to memorize it. It's there in your reminders on your phone or on the list. Very important. And that when you, and then, so, you know, I have probably about 40 of them on my list now. And every time I achieve something, I get to hit that thing and it turns purple and then it's a win. So that's part of winning. You know, the I Am Hero, if you guys have been to IamHero.com, we have our one month to win. And I talk about that a little bit more in depth, how you want to get in the habit of winning. Because the habit of winning is actually a feeling. You feel you're winning. You're feeling, you're feeling momentum. It's about getting you momentum. And when you have momentum, you, you create more momentum. And you, and you yearn and you look for more wins in your life. And it creates a, an amazing habit and you feel good about yourself and you're, and you're in just a better state. So don't try to remember things, write them down or in your phone. Then rhythms and rituals weekly. Let's talk about there for time expansion. Rhythms and rituals are that calendar, right? So the rhythm, rhythms or rituals are, if you have a date night, you wanna have that date night in the calendar. If you have a workout time, you wanna have that in the calendar. And so all the things that are important in your life that you want on a rhythm, right? So there's one-time things you put in your schedule, I get it. But during the week, what's a rhythm that you want weekly, a weekly rhythm or a bi-weekly rhythm? What do you want to do? So if it's a workout, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you have quiet time, this time, this time, every week. If there's a date night, Wednesday night, Friday night, every week. You know, you have those things. So put your rhythms in the calendar. So the rhythm is you want to get in a what? A rhythm and a habit. So once you get in a rhythm, these things become second nature. So this is where you become the person where people are like, wow, you're so productive. How do you get so much done in so little time? It's because everything 
is in a rhythm, just in my life. Everything is rhythmatic. Two o'clock, 15 minute fuel, rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. Now when I go out of town, I try to do my best to keep the rhythm, right? The rhythm comes kind of off, but that's fine. But the great thing, you know, especially when life throws you a curveball or there's a, you know, some type of issue in your life, the best way to get back to your normal routine is to get to back in your rhythm. We were, uh, we were in Houston a couple years ago, Hurricane Katrina came in and wiped out Louisiana. And all these people from Louisiana came here. And that was probably like three, four, maybe more than four years ago, maybe five years ago. And last year, people were still talking about Katrina. You know why? Because that thing knocked them out of their, out of their life for a little bit. And they, they, they were, what happens is they, they uh, almost in space, like just imagine people floating in space and then something collided and they just went like this and they never got back. To their, to their trajectory where they needed to go, right? So what happens is three, four, five years later, they're talking about Hurricane Katrina. They're talking about the spouse who died. They're talking about the child who died. They're talking about the illness they had, you know, seven years ago. So what happens when crisis hits, boom, it takes people off their, you know, off their rotation, so to speak, or rhythm or life. And if you don't have a rhythm and ritual to get back in, that's the, easy, that's the best and most efficient way to get your life back. So if something, a crisis hits, boom, you're out, yeah, no, yeah, you got to do some audibles, and then the, the quickest way to get back in is get back in your rhythms, and then you get, your, you get control of your life once again. Other, otherwise, you're going to spin out of control, and it's not months, it's years. You know, in 12 years, working with over 16,000 patients, I've seen it. I've seen, uh, I've seen a widowed, I remember uh, a lady, she came in, and uh, we showed her the care plan, and she's like, uh, do you have any, uh, do, you, do you have any sympathy for for a widowed for a widowed uh, widowed wife? I was like, oh man, I go, I'm sorry. I'm like, what happened? You know, when when your spouse died? She goes, 17 years ago. I was like, 17. I, I mean, I didn't see this. I'm like, 17 years ago. I was like, holy shit. And I was like, and I realized she never, when that happened, that that torment happened in her life. Like she went, she never got back to get her life back. So 17 years goes by and her, and her identity was in her husband dying. And you know, that's tragic, of course, but when you get back in your rhythms and rituals, so get back to your workouts every morning, get back to going to work, get back to your readings, get back to your, to your social groups that you go to, get back into preparing your meals. So when you get those rhythms again, that's the easiest way to, start, to actually get control of your life one, one time again. And that's the way you're gonna get back because then you get in your momentum, you get in your groove. Everybody sees that, right? You go on vacation for a week and it takes you a month to what? Get back on your routine. So make sure you get those rhythms and rituals. And uh, we'll finish with this one. When it comes to time expansion, diet and nutrition, you have to plan for that, right? Just So listen, so that the extra time it takes you to plan your meals meaning that you don't eat junk out, you don't get fast food, you don't go six to eight hours without eating. Watch, when I eat better, and I'm taking care of my body with diet and nutrition, I perform better, my mind is clearer, my, I have, you know, I'm sharper, I'm, I'm on my A game, and I do that by planning my meals, because when you plan your meals, and I make you know, a big bowl of ground beef and a big bowl of ground turkey, and I have my bags of broccoli all there, and I have my rice cooker done, what it does is, when you plan and you just cook all at once, it may, remember, it might take an hour to cook all that, but then it creates faster fast food after that, meaning this. So right now, after I'm done with this, I'm gonna go eat. But because I cooked a big batch of stuff, all I do is this. I weigh the ground beef, eight ounces, and I weigh the rice that I have in there, five ounces, done. Quicker than McDonald's. So fast food, <laughs> It's titled by its speed, not its nutritional content. But here you could have the most nutritious, grass-fed, everything organic, but if you just take a little bit of time and say, one hour or one hour twice a week, I'm gonna make a batch of food, I'm gonna have my vegetables, and you kind of plan that. Number one, you save money, because there's a routine. You know how much you're gonna be going through. Two, you cook it up, one hour here, one hour there, maybe you know for every three days, cook a batch of stuff, and you pull from it, boom. I throw it on the scale, throw it on the scale, done. It's it's. It takes me all of uh, 45 seconds to prepare a meal. When I'm eating, when my nutrition is on point, and Whitney and I talk about, I don't know if it's when you become, when you get older, um, you just don't uh, bounce back from something with a lot of gluten, a lot of lactose, and a lot of sugar as quick. 
you know, my vacation meals, they used to be some pretty good meals, but then the whole day after I felt so crappy and swollen and like irritated in the stomach, I'm like, it's just not worth it. And so I realized that I was off, right? So I didn't like the feeling I was off, I was sluggish. So I know when my diet and nutrition and, and exercise is on point, but more, more importantly, it's the diet and nutrition. My mind is sharp, I'm clear, and I'm on my A game. And when I'm on my A game compounded over time, I'm very efficient, my time is used wisely, I'm not moping and slugging around, and when I'm sharper, I could get a lot done in less time, right? You ever feel sluggish, you wake up that, that one morning, it's like 10 o'clock when you wake up, and then, you know, it takes you an hour to make a cup of coffee, and it just, this, it's like the day speeds by, before you know it's 3 o'clock, versus when your mind's sharp because you're feeding the body, you're, you're feeding the body the nutrients it's recreating itself out of, your brain's sharp, it's not bogged down by toxins and chemicals, and you bring that to the workplace, you bring that to the world, you become extremely efficient, and you just expand time. And that's the beauty part of it. So this is why it's another why that you want to T take time for your body, treat, treat right. But the thing is, when people say they don't have the time for their body, the time to exercise, the thing is, you do have the time. You've got to exchange time. You've got to get rid of the negative um, zero income producing activities, the, the, the ones that actually go against your goals and dreams. Two, you've got to delegate out the low income producing activities. You could barter. I mean, barter it out, right? Or you could, you know, pay a high, you know, high school or middle school kid to to work and do those things around the house that you would be doing. And then the time now you do set free or at work you delegate things out, then you use that time, use, use as much of that time to invest back into yourself, into those things that you wanted to do. Anytime you heard yourself saying, I don't have the time for this, well now you have the time for that. So now's the time you could read the book. Now's the time you could start working out. Now's the time you could start you know, eating right and preparing your meals. Now's the time you could start writing that book you want to make. Now's the time you could start working on your dream. Because one of those hours could be doing the thing you love to do. Remember, we talked about that. Whatever that thing, because many of you, you're working for, you're working hard now so you could someday do this, right? I'm working hard now so someday I can fill in the blank. Well, now I'm going to tell you to remove the time and start doing it now. So if you're doing that to start your little site, if you're, if you're working hard to someday start your side business, start your business now. How do you do it? One hour a day. I wrote an entire book. I wrote a book with a half hour a day, from 5 to 5.30 in the morning, every day, I wrote a little bit, might be a page or two, and I wrote an entire book that way. So a half hour a day, don't discount it, compounded over time, it's a 250 page book, that was actually more, but they edited it down, right? So an hour a day working on that company, that dream you wanna do, compounded every single day over time, you'll be able to get that, and you'll get where you wanna be much quicker without, think, without having to work all these years to get your dream, to do what you wanna do. The whole idea of this, the purpose of everything I'm talking to you, and really the whole purpose of every 15 minute fuel is this. There's a hero inside you, right? So once you embrace the hero mindset, meaning that you realize that if you see yourself from a spiritual perspective, that you, you came into this world and you had gifts and talents. So you're not, this is nothing learned. This is about remembering. Number one, embrace the hero mindset. Understand I'm a spiritual being in a physical body and I came with powers, right? You know, I know I, I am here for something and you know what it is. That's why you got to maximize your superpowers. What are your gifts and talents? And if you say you don't know, you do know. It's about remembering it. What are the things that you love to do? What are the things you can't stop thinking about? What is the thing that you're working your life for so you could hopefully do someday? That's it. All right? Now, maximize your superpowers, right? Now we got to develop the vehicle to get it out. So is that you starting to do uh, 15, uh, you know, Facebook Lives? Are you going to start doing videos? Are you going to start writing? Are you going to start doing podcasts or audio? So how are you going to get this out to the public? This thing that you, that you would do for free, right? Start doing it that way. And the fourth thing is, how is it going to monetize in your life so you could actually stop doing what you're doing that you might not enjoy, so you could do the thing that you would actually do for free, yet it's providing you a better quality of life, all right? And that's what, hey, this is, that's that fourth phase I'm going to help you out with as I get there. So we're, we're just going through the blueprint. I got one, two, and three down. And now I'm going to start getting into, well, how do we monetize that? How do we get to the point where you're making in your part-time life way more than you're doing in your full-time job, right? When you guys want that, your part-time thing that you love to do, you do it part-time, you actually are creating more value and income than what you're doing full-time. And that's the goal because wouldn't it be great to do what you love to do, what you would do for free, that you would never burn out, that you, when you do it, you have more energy than you have in your life. 
You are your full expression of your hero. You're giving all of yourself to the world in a way they've never seen before. And at the same time, you're getting value, whether it be financial exchange, friend capital, favor capital, or just being a happier person. And I told Whitney, just the, we're at that point where we're just in such a give mode. It's like you couldn't buy the happiness and the joy that the family's having by giving us a chance to fully express our true human and hero self, right? I mean, like, so just that alone is worth it. But this is when you have that one hour where you free up that hour to start being your hero. You can't wait for tomorrow. You got to start doing it now. And the fact that when you do it and you get excited and you have joy and you feel great, you'll never, ever look back. So have a great day. Thanks for watching 15 Minute Fuel. A couple things to get you in the habit of winning, go to imhero.com. Check that out and make sure you sign up for that and you get a one month uh, whole video series on winning. Uh, two, make sure you get your, we had a couple more pictures of people in their hero swag. Enjoy that. I'm going to order some more shirts myself after I get done with this. And make sure you're uh, on all our social media. Check out episode, I'm going to say it's 39 tomorrow. What's Friday? No, no. Yes, it, it'll probably be 39. Forgive me if it's not, but we'll be in Nashville, uh, Tennessee. You'll see that with Dr. Josh Axe. And thanks for sharing those things. The greatest thing you could do is share that. That's the big ask we ask you guys. Just ask, share it, enjoy it, comment on it, and really create a community to help people. Have an amazing day, and we'll see you tomorrow. And tomorrow's what? Family Friday. So you'll see Whitney Zano there. She'll be with me. And, and Whitney, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Whitney's going in her full hero mode, so she's starting to get her downloads. She's starting to get encouraged, and, and her her stuff's brewing, right? I love it. Like, you don't have to know the end goal. Just allow that the downloads. And what I mean by downloads is you get touched, meaning that, like, you, 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 just, you just get this, this voice in you about certain subjects. Write it down. So she's in the process, like I was three months ago. And so I'm really anxious, and I'm very, uh, I'm very proud of her. So have an amazing day. She'll share some of that tomorrow on 15-Minute Fuel, which is in 15 minutes a day. Well, for your mind, your body, say it with me, and your future.